morning, Josh. Good day, everyone. You are in the uh, Open Source Health Factors Project. This presentation's title is How Are We Doing? Open Source Health Factors Self-Assessment Experience. To lead us this morning, uh, we have some terrific folks. Uh, just joining us is John Wilson, uh, Josh Wilson, CEO of Longsight. Uh, Martin Ramsey. Uh, Martin, are you with us? Maybe I you'll am. join us later. Hello, there I you are. That. Martin is CEO of Seath.com and director of the LAMP Consortium. We also have with us Jennifer Burns, a graduate student in leadership psychology at William James College and a professor at Middlesex Community College in psychology and assessment. David Wedeman is an organizational development consultant, an organizational psychologist and a professor at William James College teaching all areas of organizational development. I will turn it over to them and as moderator I will uh, watch the chat. Do our presenters want to uh, field questions as we go or hold them all for the end? Uh, I think it can be informal. I think we can field questions um, but it, uh, we can also take them at the end so Either way is fine. Shall I jump in? Excuse me for getting up. I had to close the door. <laughs> My kids just woke up. Um, all right, that's great to be here. Thank you, everybody. Um, and it's great to talk about the Open Source Health Factors project a little bit. And this is a project that's been going on, kind of simmering in the background of the Sakai community now for about a year and two months, I think. And we've given a few presentations on it. And some of you may uh, recognize Jennifer and me because we've <laughs> been around observing and interviewing you uh, in different contexts. And so this is another, we're checking in at a different point. Uh, and today we're gonna invite you into, uh, into our thinking in, in, an un, an, in a different way than we have before. Um, so hopefully you'll like it. So the Open Source Health Factors Project, just uh, for a summary, the, the, the goal of the project is to answer the question, what makes an open source community healthy? in terms of organizational health, not in terms of physical health. <laughs> you have to make this distinction in the age of a pandemic. Um, and um, what we'd like to do today is invite you into the making of the assessment. So we've got an idea now of what makes an organization, uh, open source community healthy, what factors are involved. And now we're at the phase where we want to build a way to assess those factors and to give the ability to assess the factors to any organization that wants to improve itself. So we're at the very beginning of the assessment building process. Um, and we want to invite you into the messy work of that, uh, which I think is sort of like entering into a rabbit warren. Uh, and that's the idea for this talk. So um, and the goal of the assessment, of course, is that once you know what factors make an organization of an open source community healthy, then, then the assessment's goal is to figure out whether those factors are present in any given organizational, any given open source community, excuse, excuse me. <clears throat> so uh, here's our agenda. So I will talk, I think, I was doing this in practice pretty quickly. So it may be less than 15 minutes, but we wanna give you a, just an overview of the context of the project. And we've got a new way to, to represent the project that involves hieroglyphics. I hope you'll like. And then we'll jump right into inviting you through, through breakouts into looking at different aspects of our assessment as it's being built. And you can have lots of influence over the shape of the thing. Uh, you'll see. And then after a little bit of time to break out, we'll come back together and, and collect some of what your thoughts and takeaways were. So that's our plan. Um, and so I'll just jump into that. So here's our hieroglyphic representation of the progress of our project. Um, and these uh, pictures are intended to sort of represent the focus or the thinking that we're doing in any given stage. So I'm going to just move from left to right um, and, and talk through these. Above the, above the line is the representation of the phase. Uh, and below it will be the actions that occurred in that phase or will be about to occur because we haven't actually finished all these phases. So. In the beginning, all the way to the left, basically our job was to try to understand what's going on in open source communities and what, and some preliminary ideas about what factors might make for healthy organizational communities. So we, we were doing research 
on open source, we were doing research on organizational health, and we were engaging with the Sakai community, which volunteered to be our guinea pig. Uh, thankfully, thank you, Sakai community. So we were observing Sakai members at work. We were interviewing Sakai members. We did a survey. Um, through that work, we identified uh, 14 factors that we thought were important uh, uh, for the organizational health and open source communities. And we started to confirm those factors by looking to see if they were present in our observations we, as we watched the Sakai community work and by talking to people in interviews. And so we had at the end of that was phase two. At the end of phase two, we had a list of 14 factors, which is here for the record. Um, and I'm not going to go into all these in detail, but just so you know that these are kind of what we thought were at work. And probably the most important thing is that what seemed to us is that they broke in, important is that they were able to be categorized into three big buckets. Um, factors that related to people, individual people, and how well they were supported. Uh, factors that related to the work, the actual work itself, the organization of what we were calling tasks, that's the middle category. And then factors that related to the organization as a whole um, that we were calling organization. And so, so those were the 14 factors. And then the next phase, uh, as we're now, we're now entering into where we are at the moment, uh, the job is to, to assess for those factors. But you can't really build an assessment for 14 different factors. It's a little bit too many. So we knew we had to reduce the list. And we, had, we thought we had a little redundancy in the 14 factors. So uh, we worked on narrowing it down and trying to find the core ideas that were working behind all the factors and trying to frame them in ways that could actually be measured. And so then we came up with a smaller list of things that we called constructs. And so that list of constructs, the working list uh, is here. So we've got from 14, we're now down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight constructs, two or three in each of the categories. And this feels a little more manageable to us. So you could imagine an assessment that had a few questions about each of these coming out to be in the 20 to 30 question zone and that's a manageable online survey we think so we have and i'm not going to drill in these now either because that's the activity later um, so we have our constructs and the next phase for us is to turn those into an assessment and that, that's where we are right now um, and how do you do that well the uh the the big picture is you want to come up with a way to guess or assess or see whether the particular constructs are present in a community. Um, so what this, this could be any kind of measurement, it could be an empirical measurement, um, but what in practice this usually means for most people creating assessments is you're building an online survey where you're asking people questions that uh, are designed to elicit whether or not the particular constructs are present in the community. So, so what we're basically doing is starting to build questions that we think uh, can tell us whether or not the constructs are present. So, and um, finally, and that's where we're at now, and you're gonna get to see those questions uh, as we have them and, and comment on them in a minute or two. Um, but finally, I just wanted to talk about the end game. What's the end game of this entire thing? That's to give an, ex an accessible, usable, understandable, relevant assessment to open source communities to use with, for their own self-reflection, right? So when this thing's built, we hope to hand it over. And if it works, it, it would be a, just a regular once yearly sort of a review self audit process that any open source community could use to try to figure out where they might be doing well and where they might need to improve. So that's the big picture. Um, are there any questions about, why don't I pause now because I think we're actually doing okay on time. Why don't I pause now and just let, invite Jennifer or Josh or Martin to fill in any gaps I might have skimmed over and ask for any questions before we uh, go to the next uh, phase of the presentation, which is to jump into the details. Any comments or thoughts or thumbs up from Josh? Thumbs up. <laughs> All right, well then let's move to the action part of the agenda. 
Um, okay, so I'm invite, we're inviting you to come inside the rabbit hole now. So that so far we've been on the surface <laughs> with that, that happy rabbit that hasn't gone in the hole. Now we're gonna go down inside. So we have only just begun the assessment process. So we, uh, we've got our constructs. We're, not we're pretty sure they're good. We're not totally sure. We might be missing something. Um, and we started to compile questions. Some of the questions we know are good. Some of them we don't feel that great about. Some of the constructs we don't have questions for yet. So that's where we're at. So we're inviting you to just come in and see where we're at and, and add your thoughts and ideas and ask questions and poke around and prod around. Um, so this is how we wanna do it. So we're, we're, we're gonna do breakout rooms. If the technology works, we're gonna invite you to choose one of three breakout rooms and the room will, will focus on one of the three aspects of the assessment. So the people aspect, the task aspect or the organizational aspect. And Jennifer, Josh, and I will be sort of facilitators in those spaces. And what will happen is I'll just go forward to show you one slide. When you get in the room, you'll see something like this. You'll see this is the one that you'll see in the people room. You'll see the, con the three constructs that relate to that category, the defi working definition that we currently have, and some of the questions. And the facilitator, in this case, it'll be Jennifer, will kind of guide you through those things. And then it'll just be an open conversation where you can ask anything point out anything, recognize anything, be confused, be annoyed, whatever, <laughs> whatever your reaction to this is useful to us. And then we'll just kind of talk to you and answer questions and listen and think about your perspective, gather that, and we'll share that back with everybody at the end of the presentation. Uh, does that make sense? Does that give you a sense of what's going to happen? Everybody good? Okay. I can't actually see everybody. I can only see Josh and, and Jennifer and Laura. <laughs> Um, so I, uh, let's, let's jump in. So Laura, if you could do the thing where you invite us all to select room one, two, or three, and everybody select your relevant room. The rooms are in, named, then, named after the folks who are in them. Oh, oh, did you put, were you able to put names on the room? Oh, yes. Oh, you're good. We couldn't figure out, I couldn't figure out how to do that yesterday. And so we, uh, let's see, when will we come back? Laura, can you bring us back at 9.35? And that gives us 20 minutes or so. Absolutely. OK, thank you. And so I think people will pretty shortly be invited to. Um, you should see at the bottom of your bar, or wherever that bar is, that the breakout rooms are now active. And there are seven of you who haven't chosen a room to go to yet. I'm going to stop my share. OK, Laura, color me ignorant. Where? <laughs> Yeah, Laura, I'm not seeing them. Um, I think it's, it might be because I'm in here as a co-host, but. Well, that, yeah, I wondered if that was. So do you see it where it says share recording and chat and so forth that there's breakout rooms, a uh, breakout yep. rooms icon? Nope. Mm -hmm. Did you click the open all rooms button? I did. And did you invite people? No, this is a you can join. Uh, if I may uh, add, I see all the buttons. I just think nobody's joining. That's, uh... So if you click on one. I I'm... can uh, join Jennifer, for instance. Yeah. Harold and Jennifer are both in their room, as far as I know. And Frank has joined Jennifer. Uh, Dave and Michael Green are in a room. Josh, you are not in a room. I was in a room, but I was all by myself, so I thought I would come back momentarily. <laughs> okay. So, Martin, do you see the breakout rooms? I do not. I do yeah, not I don't. I don't all. either. Where? I'm not seeing it either. So it's all kind of tricky, you know. So there's a breakout room button at the bottom of the Zoom window. Uh, now that Laura has enabled this, and if you click on that that will give you the opportunity to choose. Yeah. It should give you a, a list of breakout rooms in progress. 
Might the buttons that I see are mute, stop seeing. video, participants, chat, share screen, and reactions. That's it. No breakout rooms. So for some reason, it's not showing up for me. I'm Which room would you like to be in? I'll put you in one. Put me with Jennifer. Or put me with Josh if he's all by himself. <laughs> all right. Yeah, just go. stick me in a room, Laura. I don't care which one. Okay. Martin, well, you, you should go wherever will make you happy. I, I will be okay. <laughs> I'd be happy to be with you. Okay. Jacques, I'm going Yeah, to put me in the organizational room, but I don't see anything. Josh, Wilma, you don't care where you are. Yeah, just I'm whichever one needs more people. <laughs> Wilma in with Jennifer. Hi, Molly. I'm going to put you in with Dave. So I, I think Jock wants to go with Dave because he's uh, the organizational one. I'm the task one. Oh, Jock Jock wants to go to Dave. I believe so. I mean, I'm happy to have him, but I'll move him to Dave. All right. Hello, Jorge. The group is currently in breakout rooms discussing uh, categories for improvement for open source organizations. Can you hear me, Jorge? Oh, good, good, good. So, uh, would you like to join one of those conversations? They're uh, due to convene back in the main room here in uh, five to eight minutes. There are three rooms, one led by Josh, one led by Dave Wiedemann, and one led by a grad student, Jennifer Burns. Do you want to join one of those, or would you like to just... Uh, okay. Let me put you in the best room. Are we the only ones here? <laughs> Everybody will come back.
Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Glad to be back. Are we all Hello. here? Uh, we've had a couple people join us while we were in breakout rooms. I hope they didn't uh, run off and leave us. Jorge's still here. Um, all right. David, what have you guys got for us next? We've lost David. It muted me. <laughs> I was secretly trying to write my notes into the last overview document and slide in the slides, but I won't, I'll give up on that and I'll just report orally. So my group was, we're going to, so we're just doing, oh, by high level, we're going to do a report out on the groups, I think at this point, and just let the three breakout rooms talk about what happened. And I can go first, unless Josh or um, Jennifer, you guys want to do it. Jennifer's giving me a thumbs up. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> so I was in the breakout room talking about the organizational uh, aspect of the assessment. And so I had with me Jacques, Molly, and Michael. And we're trying to think about this the, what we're doing in this section of the assessment is we're thinking about the organization as a kind of an ecosystem, as an overall structure or container. And not, we're not looking at the, the team level or the task level or the individual level. We're looking at the entire uh, community and within the open source project. And we're trying to figure out how do you measure whether that's healthy at that scale. And so uh, we just were talking about the two constructs that we had, which were governance, is it well run? and design is the structure of the organization appropriate to what it's trying to do. And this aspect of the assessment is probably the least well-developed <laughs> because <laughs> it's actually a challenge to measure whether an organization is well-run or well-designed um, with simple questions. Um, so we just had a kind of open conversation about this. And so some of the ideas that came up were these that, uh, this is from Jacques, uh, that maybe the sign of a well-governed, uh, well-designed organization is a certain kind of information flow, a certain kind of regular conversation uh, about the organization, about where, what your place in it is, about the mission, about the, where it's headed. And we might be able to measure that by looking for certain kinds of websites or newsletters or community meetings or something like that. That was one thought. A second thought, this was from Michael, had to do with teams. So uh, within the construct of the teams, the functional operations of the teams, that's in the task category of this assessment, but the creation of the teams comes under the organizational category. And so you can look to see if there are teams for, for functional areas, but that they also need to be well-resourced and staffed. And that's a sign that you're governed in perhaps and uh, designed correctly. Um, Molly um, brought up a couple of ideas that seemed important. One was not everybody in the organization is able to take the organization view, right? Especially if you're new and you're just working, focusing on a particular task, you might not really even know the rest of the organization. So how do we just have a survey that anyone can answer? How do we assess whether the individual actually kind of knows, <laughs> can see that layer? That's a good question. And uh, Molly also pointed out that you don't want to just measure for existing structures, uh, like governing structures, do you have a board, but you want to measure whether the people governing it are doing it well, right? You want effectiveness of governance, you want quality of governance, quality of performance. So how do you measure that? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, and I'm going to jump to the last one. Um, and this came was from Jacques, just to be short on time, because we had a lot of ideas. Um, but the last one was basically about the differential contributions that people make. And so Different people give, and different organizations in open source community give different levels of money or other kinds of contributions. And so Jacques pointed out that the organization needs to somehow acknowledge the differential contributions uh, and give some kind of recognition or influence for that in exchange for that, but balance that against the norm of equivalence and inclusion that's present in open source. And so if an organization can figure out how to do that, then it's probably well governed and well designed. Um, <laughs> so there you go. Those are the things we were talking about. And thank you to the guys in my breakout. I, I took from Molly and Jacques uh, the idea that 
you could use information saturation, process information, saturation in the organization as a proxy for for governance. So if if there's an onboarding of new people, then you know what what do they what do they know? And are there pockets of people who don't know what the governance body is, don't know how to a uh, conflict or decision making is handled and, and so forth? That would be a bad sign of uh, you know of effectiveness of governance. Oh yeah, Laura, that's a but really the good... saturation of the information. The more people who are aware, oh yeah, these this is the person you go to for that, or these are the processes for that, or I know where that web page is. Let me review those processes again. Yeah, that, that could proxy for that. That's good. So so if our assessment could assess information saturation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then we might have. That's actually really good. Thank you. Uh, and it, if I, they don't know because it doesn't exist, that's one thing. But if they don't know because it does exist and it hasn't been communicating, you know, that leads to a, a, a different uh, mediation. Yeah, I thought I have a lot of thoughts about that, but I wanted to make sure there's time for the task group and the people group to share kind of what came up for them. So uh, why don't we go to task with Josh and just go backwards across the screen here. So I managed to scribe uh, most of what we said into this slide, and I, I shared it out just so you guys can see it. Um, I just want to say thanks to Martin and Laura and Jorge for, uh, for uh, traveling down this task road. So in general, we thought that the three constructs under task, uh, problem solving, structures, and what's the third one? Uh, um, <clears throat> and data were 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 good, and they were they were well defined. Um, I find myself wondering if if data might want to include both qualitative and quantitative data. Um, currently, it's only uh, talking about quantitative data, but uh, that was something that that didn't necessarily come up. What uh, what did come up uh, was a conversation about problem solving. So we we thought about whether problem solving ought to span all three dimensions: people, task, and organization. Um, but we, we as a group decided that probably it ought not to, um, because uh, problem solving in the people space spans relatedness and psychological safety, and problem solving in the organizational space tends to land in governance. So we thought about a different framing for problem solving, maybe barrier removal or something like that. Laura talked about uh, removing barriers that, uh, that inhibit forward movement or progress. So we, we, we thought about that a little bit. And then we turned to structures, <clears throat> trying to think about, you know, what were those buckets that need to be measured? Uh, and we thought about a, a technical functional bucket, which might include tracking suggestions for improvements, logging bugs, reviewing and approving code. Uh, so, and then we thought about an organizational bucket, you know, so are there, uh, do people meet to discuss problems and ideas? Do those groups have defined goals? How well do they meet the goals that are defined for them? You know, so both thinking about the the capturing of the administrivia of of issues that move toward further progress, and also capturing the the effectiveness of the workings of the groups that think those issues through. We are now at. Uh... 945. Let's hear from Jennifer this that we have five minutes left in this presentation. Thank you, Laura. Jennifer, your mic is muted. Hi, Josh, do you mind unsharing? Thank you. So thank you to Wilma and Harold for joining me for the people category um, and some of the things that came up. So I'm not sure what other questions, if you saw on the, um, the questions OCGT, we wanted to know how to define that. Is, is it for organization? Is it organization, um, community groups or teams? With, and we wanted to maintain consistency throughout the assessment. 
Um, and Wilma suggested that we use community. However, that in the rollout and the development of it, that um, it can be customized to, customized to the user that's going to use it. So there might be a drop down menu where um, they customize whether it's they're using the word organizational, community, groups, or teams to what they're going to measure in assessment for that. Um, so if anybody saw that and had any questions about that, um, that did come up in our conversation. Um, confidentiality of participants' responses was, was also brought up, um, and Harold brought that up. He, and in that one of the reasons we do reversed um, questions in assessment development is to kind of control for that agreeable bias. Um, and in doing so, we also, my hope is, I'm not you know the end all be all for this project, however, um, is that their confidentiality is protected during assessment, taking the assessment that we're not taking, um, you know, we're not taking people's location off their computers or their IP addresses or whatever it is so that we don't know who is reporting what they are reporting. Um, and I think that maintaining confidentiality with assessment is kind of helps people to be a little more open and honest and transparent in assessments in taking the assessments. I think that that is an important factor of, um, you know, the assessment process. Um, one of the questions for people, um, Wilma suggested that the wording, so the question, I don't remember, um, how it was worded, but it was worded basically, I could probably go backwards to, if that's to the question, if I do this correctly, I might want to please, all right, this two, three. Okay, I did it. So I, um, I feel we avoid difficult questions is the first question under psychological safety. And Wilma suggested that um, we change the wording to that question. And in, instead of it being a reverse item question to maybe have it um, state that I feel comfortable voicing difficult questions would be the better way to assess that um, in the process. Um, we also discussed, um, Hal brought up networking with like-minded like people. We're not assessed. I don't think we have a question to assess that. Um, and I think that networking, being able to work in that into the assessment that is, um, very um, good feedback for being able to make sure that that's included also for the health of um, open source community. And then group participation. Um, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, what, what is that? What is group participation? How would we measure for that? And then time kind of got cut short a little bit, um, but this is a working document as David expressed at the beginning. So please at, at any time, um, anybody would like to provide us with more feedback in the process of this development, um, I would be very thankful for that. Thank you. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm typing. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, everybody. So we have a minute uh, and I don't want us to go over um, out of respect for the boundaries. Uh, but what is there anything we can speak to or talk to you about? Um, thank you all for your participation. This worked out really well. Uh, I'm going away with a whole bunch of new questions <laughs> that I don't know the answers to. <laughs> and that's great. Process management's a hobby, unfortunately. So yeah, I tend to look at things as like how do what are the organization what are the processes of an organization? How do they work? how you know what's what's effective what's not effective if you have formal processes in place that aren't effective but people are bypassing them through informal process then that has to be addressed otherwise you're going to have problems down the line right. <laughs> well, thank great, you great thank you so much for leading this presentation josh martin dave jennifer it's been terrific a hand of applause. <laughs> and I'm now closing the recording, stopping the recording. <laughs>